you ran for uh, um, what Congress, you U.S. Congress. U.S. Congress as a Republican. Yes. And were you a Democrat before coming, becoming a Republican? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, the very first time Obama ran, uh, I, I, I voted for him. Really? Yeah. D disappointingly, you, yeah. I know you disappointed in me, right? I'm stunned. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Did you vote for him twice or only once? Oh, no, just once. And what made you vote for Obama, the fallen messiah? I, I know. I, I, well, I was a Democrat <laughs> at the time. Um, my parents were not, believe it or not, my parents were not political at all. My right. father was just a hard worker. He was just a truck driver, right? He'd come home smelling like diesel, and just, that was his interest. Right. He, wasn't, he wasn't involved in sports or anything, just working. My mother was just a, you know, she was in the church and, uh, and into our lives, but I didn't know about politics. But being around a black community in Mississippi, everybody was just, it was right. just Democrat, which is automatic. That's why I became one, too, out here. You were a Democrat? Out here. I but can't believe it. Growing up in Alabama, I didn't know any Democrats. I only knew, all the black people I knew were Republicans. At what year did and, you become a Republican? Um, I moved out here 68, 69, 70, 70. In the 70s? Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think it was like 2006, no, no, 2014. Maybe in the 80s. Okay. But go ahead. Okay. But I think it was around two, 2014, where I, well prior to that. I had this epitome, and I, and I began to look deeper into Obama. Yeah. He, he's a destroyer. He's a liar. And I believe he hates black people. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't call him the first black American president because he's not. His father is African and his mother is, is Caucasian. And he, did, he didn't have a connection to the black feeling of the black, uh, 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 black America. Yeah. And, and here's another thing that what the Democrat Party does is that they take the, the mulatto blacks, the light-skinned blacks, and they put them in front of us because, you know, you know they, they think that we're just attracted to light-skinned blacks. And you get people like uh, Susan Rice, Kamala Harris, Obama, and you make them the leaders. But somebody as dark-skinned as me, they would never mm. uh, put me out there. And most of those mulatto so-called Democrat leaders are, have ties to other countries, like Jamaica. Uh, uh, Colin Powell, yeah. his parents, are, he's from Jamaica, and, and he's half white. We should have foreigners run our country anyway. Exactly. But let me ask, what's wrong with the blacks? I don't know. I, I, think it's hypno I think it's hypnosis. I think, uh, I think it's, um, and I, I don't want to say this in a, in a way that, that to belittle people, it's, it's ignorance. You know, when, when I dropped that political ad that went viral last year with the KKK, a lot of black people didn't know that the, the, the Democrat right. Party was the ones who were responsible for the KKK. So they was calling me all kinds of coons and, you know, N-words and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, read your history. But the problem is, is that on these social platforms, they're scrubbing history and, and rewriting it. Yeah, you they know? are. What yeah. a mess. It's, it's really dangerous what, yeah. we got, what we have here. I noticed that the blacks, not all, not all, but most, that they are not really innovative. They're not smart. They don't build things. Yeah. And even when the white people give them their stuff, mm -hmm. they tear it down. They destroy it rather than make it better. Right. Why is that? Um, it's all about respect and appreciation. But why but, don't they but, appreciate it? Let me say this. I, I say that uh, foreign blacks, people, bl people who are black and weren't born in American soil, they come over and take advantage of all of the wonderful things that this country provides. Right. But because the Democrat Party and I guess our families have taught um, uh, black descendants that this is, this is nothing, even calling somebody an African-American, is disdain for your place here in America. Absolutely. The, you, I'm, I've never been to Africa. I, I've, out of all of my world travels, I've never been there. I don't know any family members that I'm connected to there. So it's a psychological job to, when I call you an African-American. You don't know, but in your, in your brain, that's doing a job on you psychologically. It is. It's displacing you it's from your you homeland. Away from your country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think the party has done a wonderful job uh, at, at uh, making black people angry at their heritage here in America. So you don't appreciate it. I know what you mean by that. And that's mm -hmm. what the Democrats do. They keep the blacks on the plantation of the Democratic Party right. so that they can use them for destruction. Mm -hmm. If you notice, they don't ever use blacks for good. They always use them for destruction. Absolutely. Oh. And why can't the blacks say to themselves as an individual, this is wrong for me to steal and break right. in people's property and beat up white people and... 
why don't they say that as an adult, as an individual, mm -hmm. why don't they see that and not do it? I don't know. I think it's based on emotion and ignorance. Yeah. If, if you just, if you tell a, a, a black kid in, in the hood, you tell them that a Republican is racist, that Donald Trump is racist, they're not going to do research. The emotion automatically takes over all logic. It does. And they just begin to just operate on emotions. So that's a terrible thing. Uh, but when you try to enlighten them, like I did with my, with my video and with my congressional run, um, they don't have time to listen to it. I saw that video where you with the Klan thing. It yeah. was powerful. Thank you. And uh, we're going to tell people how to see it. Okay. It really was. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I ended up getting poisoned behind that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What you mean, nice? And now you want to kill me, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like, really? You like? I was poisoned. I was in the hospital for six days. Really? Yes. What do you, how did they poison you? Brother, I think, it was, uh, I think it was something I drank. I thought you meant they call you names. Or no, no, no. I was literally poisoned. I was airlifted to, to Banner Hospital. Um, well, actually, I drove myself at 3 o'clock in the morning to Tempe, uh, St. Luke's, went there. I got there at 3 o'clock in the morning, and they didn't see me right away. I laid on the cold floor waiting for them to see all of the new border crosses, all of the wonderful people who crossed the border who got priority over me. Yeah, that's important. Uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, they was lifting me off the floor, and I was drenched in sweat. My kidneys were shutting down. Hair was hurting. And my pulse was almost gone. So. Wow. Yeah. And, and how do you know that they poisoned? I was poisoned. They told the you that told the me doctor? They, they put oh. police protection at my door. And how do you know it was because of your ad? It happened right after that. And here's the thing that was funny, is that I was being followed everywhere by the, I think was the FBI. For oh. four days, everywhere I went. And this was close to my primary. So I was campaigning maybe four, five, six, seven places in a day. So I was all over the place, and people asked me where did I get poisoned, and I had no idea. You know, I couldn't even tell oh. you, you know, where I was most of those times because I was really campaigning, meeting people, and telling them my, why I'm running and all that kind of stuff. Long and, story short, how did, what did that feel like to be poisoned? What, what were you feeling inside? Pain, uh, vomiting, oh. uh, yeah, uh, just sick. Wow. Super headache, uh, yeah, just mostly vomiting, pain in my back, I couldn't stand up straight. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm my glad. kidneys shut down. How long were you ill? Six days. Wow. And I was weak maybe maybe about a month after that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, I'm glad you made it through that. I thought you meant personal attacks and things oh, like no, that. Oh, it no, was, it was really literal. Funny that thing is, is amazing. Funny thing is, my opponents never even, nobody ever even checked on me. My, lots of my volunteers was outside of the hospital, but my Republican opponents, they never even, you know, I was fighting for my life. Have you, I believe that we now have a one-party system. And you think that, it's a uniparty? Uni I think that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are the same now. Yeah. And uh, because I noticed with the Republican, they get nothing done. And yeah. when Donald Trump was in office, they worked against him. Yes, they did. And not with him. Yeah. So why should we vote for the Republican Party knowing that we're a one-party system now. We don't have a two-party. I love our policies. Our platform is, is immaculate. It's wonderful. It's great for the American people. It's great for stimulus. It's great for the economy. It's great for families. You know, it, 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 you know having the heart of the fathers come back to the families. But they're not doing it. If things. we could get some people in office who would stick to the policies of, yeah. the, of the republic, then we would have a great America. Right. But when Trump was in office, he, we had the House and the Senate. If he didn't have those turncoats and those corrupt leaders in the Republican Party, America would have been so much established. Absolutely. We would have made up stuff in, 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 in within 20, 20 years. So I got so much I want to ask you, but let me ask you this. Knowing that I know that black people don't do anything, they don't make anything better, even the black, black Republican, you know that guy, Tim Scott? Tim Scott. He ain't no good. He haven't done anything. He's a writer. Well, to me, I, I look at his record, and I haven't seen anything. I so haven't seen. So why anything. should I vote for a black person, whether they're Republican or not, mm -hmm. knowing that they ain't gonna do nothing? I don't want anybody to vote for me based on my skin color. I want people to listen to the content of my character. I want you to listen to my policies. If my policies are going to enhance your life and make you better, if you f if you fit into the strategy of my policies, you wear uh, uh, traditional families, uh, secured borders, protecting children, and protecting our freedom. Well, then if that's not for you, then don't don't vote for me just because I'm a black person. Vote for me based on the policies. But once you get in there, are you how are you going to be able to stand up to the women? 
Republican women. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, there you go. Oh, I love this guy. I love Jesse a lot. And, and, and the party that's going to be against you. And especially with the women, because a lot of men, most men can't stand up to women, right? How will you be able to do that when you think that a woman can lead? Well, I, I'm, I'm not led by a woman's skirt or her power to lead. I'm led by the Constitution. What's great for the American people? And if that bill is not for the American people, if they want me to send money to Ukraine and to Israel and all these different places, no. I believe in America first. Our people are struggling here. We have people on the street. We they have don't people even take who, care of home. They don't. It's, just, it's the most upsetting thing I've ever yeah. seen. So no woman or man or anybody else is going to get me to vote against the American people.